the soul is a non-physical energy of consciousness, but a vehicle of consciousness which travels through space and time. It reincarnates. Your soul has come into this body with a past history, and that past history led it to have a particular identity, to be born to a particular set of parents in a particular culture. Right? That didn't happen for nothing. That happened because there is karma that the soul carries. But that identity is the same that it was before, now that it's in this body? Yes. The soul is remains it? with its All identity, but it has a trajectory. Yeah. And in every life, the soul develops a different ego consciousness. So the soul has no name. The name you were given by your parents then pertains to the ego. The soul is the, the vehicle that then carries the ego, right? And then once the ego is in there, the soul is forgotten. It becomes heavy and then ego conscious instead of soul conscious. So when you pop through the ego, you return to soul consciousness. Your soul consciousness has a natural yearning for God. The ego has no interest in God. It has an interest in pleasure, sensuality, all of that. But the soul has an interest in returning to God. So the soul is a higher level of consciousness than the ego. And the soul is the level in which the, the true higher awareness and higher intelligence opens up. And the ability to love in the true sense, without attachment, without desire, without those elements. So uh, the soul then becomes the vehicle which enables you to begin your spiritual development, which means that the soul itself surrenders to spirit. And spirit is that within you which is unborn. It has never come into the field of karma. It has never identified with a body. It has never picked up sanskaras or tendencies or traits uh, that have caused it to reincarnate. So the spirit is that w within you which is still one with God. We call it Atman in Sanskrit. How, how do you call it? Atman. Atman is the original word for spirit. And that spirit, because it is always untouched by negativity, when you realize it, you're in a state of love and bliss and wisdom. It all opens up. And, uh, and that's what enables you to let go of even the soul as a vehicle and be liberated back into total union with God. So the spirit never lies in the body. <coughs> right. Never. Spirit is not localizable. Not at all. Correct. Because in the Roman Catholic um, tradition, uh, normally we used to hear that uh, uh, he has just died, his spirit is uh, going up. Well, what they, what they really mean is the soul going up. It's the soul. What they yeah. When they talk about spirit, they, they are, when they talk about the Holy Spirit, yeah. that's the real spirit. But the Holy Spirit is in all of us. It is one spirit. But it is the pure spirit. Holy also means pure, right? So it means the spirit that is not identified at all with soul or with body. It's, it's transcendent. So it's part of God. It's part of the Trinity. When one realizes the spirit while one is alive, then one becomes the sun, right? That, these are all metaphors. And the sun then travels via the spirit to the Father. But Father, Holy Spirit, Son are one. And Son, of course, refers to daughter as well. It's not about gender of the body. So uh, the, these are the three aspects of God. When you are uh, awakened to your spirit, you are Christed. You're anointed with that power of God. And then you become one with the Father through that realization. So the blow of light in the body comes from the soul. The, the what? The blow, the... The, the, the feeling of life in the body yes, yes. comes from, from well, ultimately from spirit. from spirit spirit is the source of life the source of life yes. but when the soul leaves the body the life leaves also because the, the soul carries the spirit out of the body as well seemingly out of the body but the source of it is the spirit are they attached or attached to the, the spirit and the soul yes Yes, although spirit is non-localizable, whereas soul is localizable. It's that individualized aspect of spirit. But nonetheless, when the soul leaves, then the spirit disconnects from the body and the body dies. Kind of complex. Yes, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> it's not that complex. Okay. But when one has a near-death experience, the soul leaves, but not necessarily the spirit. And that, they call that the silver cord. And as long as that's still attached, one can come back into the body, even if the body is seemingly dead. There is still a, a connection from the spirit that, that causes one to return to the body. But once that is over, then one leaves. And, but if the soul cannot dissolve into the light because it still has karma, it has a heaviness and a, an attachment to the physical, then it will have to reincarnate and continue the process. And is that if among this, this process, about the process of death, how long it takes to, to the soul to leave the body? If there is a, some knowledge about it? Yes. How it works? It's a, it's a, this is more complex. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and the reason it's more complex is it depends on the state of consciousness of the one who is dying. There are some people who, who even though they're dying and could leave the body, they don't leave the body because they're attached to the body. And, uh, and therefore they will stay with the body even after the body is dead. They will sometimes haunt the body or hang out with the body. And that's why it's very, it's very important for those who are, are with that person, who are grieving perhaps, give it, that person permission, give the soul permission to leave. Because often the attachment of relatives is, don't go, don't die, don't leave us. It causes the, that soul to stay there. And then it, it doesn't go to the light. And then it takes more time uh, for the, the soul to... Uh, let go of all of the, of the dispersion of its energy that goes into all the cells. So although the body dies as a, a soul, as a consciousness of, of a unity, the cells remain alive for a long time. And, and the sooner one withdraws all of one's life energy out of the cells, the sooner the body becomes really inert. And, and in the traditional cultures, you would not bury the body or, or burn it uh, for several days until all of the life of the cells was gone so that um, there was no negative karma or pain or, or suffering that was uh, committed on that body. And, and so th there were many rites that would help to accelerate the leaving of all the life energy to go up to the light that we've lost today. So we have a very unsacred way of dealing with both birth and death in our culture. There's a lot of denial involved with both of them. <laughs>